Can we talk about this death business for a minute? What do you want to know? Well, what happens when you die? What do you choose to have happen? You mean that what happens is whatever we choose to have happen? Do you think that just because you've died, you stop creating? I don't know. That's why I'm asking you. <laughs> Fair enough. You do know, incidentally, but I see you've forgotten, which is great. Everything's gone according to plan. When you die, you do not stop creating. Is that definitive enough for you? Yes. Good. Now, the reason you do not stop creating when you die is that you don't ever die. You cannot, for you are life itself, and life cannot not be life. Therefore, you cannot die. So at the moment of your death, what happens is you go on living. This is why so many people who have died do not believe it. Because they do not have the experience of being dead. On the contrary, they feel, because they are, very much alive. So there's confusion. The self may see the body lying there, all crumpled up, not moving, yet the self is suddenly moving all over the place. It has the experience often of literally flying all over the room, then of being everywhere in the space, all at once. And when it desires a particular point of view, it suddenly finds itself experiencing that. If the soul, the name we will now give to the self, wonders, gee, why is my body not moving? It will find itself right there, hovering right over the body, watching the stillness curiously. If someone enters the room and the soul thinks, who is that? Immediately the soul is in front of or next to that person. Thus, in a very short time, the soul learns that it can go anywhere with the speed of its thought. A feeling of incredible freedom and lightness overtakes the soul, and it usually takes a little while for the entity to get used to all this bouncing around with every thought. If the person had children and should think of those children, immediately the soul is in the presence of those children wherever they are. Thus the soul learns that not only can it be wherever it wants with the speed of its thought, it can be in two places at once, or three places, or five. It can exist, observe, and conduct activities in these places simultaneously, without difficulty or confusion. Then it can rejoin itself, returning to one place again, simply by refocusing. The soul remembers in the next life what it would have been well to remember in this life, that all effect is created by thought, and that manifestation is a result of intention. What I focus on as my intention becomes my reality. Exactly. The only difference is the speed with which you experience the result. In the physical life, there might be a lapse between thought and experience. In the spirit's realm, there is no lapse. Results are instantaneous. Newly departed souls therefore learn to monitor their thoughts very carefully. Because whatever they think of, they experience. I use the word learn here very loosely, more as a figure of speech than an actual description. The term remember would be more accurate. If physicalized souls learn to control their thoughts as quickly and as efficiently as spiritualized souls, their whole lives would change. In the creation of individual reality, thought control, or what some might call prayer, is everything. Prayer? Thought control is the highest form of prayer. Therefore, think only on good things and righteous. Dwell not in negativity and darkness. And even in moments when things look bleak, especially in those moments, see only perfection, express only gratefulness, and then imagine only what manifestation of perfection you choose next. In this formula is found tranquility. In this process is found peace. In this awareness is found joy. To recap then, souls released from the body quickly remember to monitor and control their thoughts very carefully for whatever they think of. That is what they create and experience. I say again, it is the same for souls still residing with the body, except the results are usually not as immediate. 
And it is the time lapse between thought and creation, which can be days, weeks, months, or even years, which creates the illusion that things are happening to you, not because of you. This is an illusion, causing you to forget that you are at cause in the matter. As I have described now several times, this forgetting is built into the system. It is part of the process, for you cannot create who you are until you forget who you are. So the illusion causing forgetfulness is an effect created on purpose. When you leave the body, it will therefore be a big surprise to see the instant obvious connection between your thoughts and your creations. It will be a shocking surprise at first and then a very pleasant one as you begin to remember that you were at cause in the creation of your experience, not at the effect of it. 